I'm a farmer, not here, but here, at the MIT Media Lab. I work at the Open Agriculture Initiative on a team of pretty unconventional farmers. We're farmers, but we're also architects, programmers, electrical engineers, flavor chemists, writers, and I'm a mechanical engineer. And we're all using these seemingly unrelated disciplines to research and develop what may become the future of agriculture. We're building open source toolkits to empower a community of new unconventional farmers made up of chefs, artists, kids, as much as engineers and traditional farmers. Our toolkits are for controlled environment agriculture, which a lot of people believe can help us feed the 9 billion people of 2050 if we can get it just right. So, Plants and people, we're not so different. We both have DNA, which has a lot to do with how we turn out. But a lot of what makes us us also has to do with our environment. It's nature versus nurture. And in biology terms, that loosely translates to phenome and genome. Now at OpenAg, we're focused on the nurture the phenome. Instead of modifying the genes of plants, we're modifying the environments to see how different temperature or humidity levels change a plant's physical traits. And the better you can control a farming environment, the better you can control the food that comes out of it. And that has to do with physical traits like nutritional density and yield and even flavor. So, Characterizing the phenome of lettuce, for example, is complex. There are so many parts of an environment to measure, so many plant traits to evaluate. But let's imagine for a second that we have a dashboard of environmental controls, and you manage to tune your environment to create a water stress that creates sweeter lettuce. Maybe you tune humidity and light levels, and you create higher nutrient density or higher fresh weight per energy into your farm. Eventually, using your perfectly tuned recipes, you'll be able to consistently grow more nutritious, more resource effective, and even tastier food than you could outside. So we're calling these climate recipes. Your set points that define your environment, what inputs into your system it takes to create that environment, and how that environment affects your crop. So imagine that collectively we'd found the perfect climate recipes for tomatoes, eggplants, sweet lettuce, spicy basil, and anyone could just pluck that environment from an open database to grow whatever they wanted, no matter their location or their season. What if we could create save, and share climate. We could democratize climate, and in doing so, democratize food. Because no matter where you could be, you could grow strawberries in the climate of Mexico, grow grapes in the climate of California. So what is this toolkit? We're working on systems for implementing climate recipes. And I did my mechanical engineering thesis at OpenAg, developing this first food computer, a desktop-controlled environment agriculture platform. And this first version had control loops for air and water temperature, and we did experiments on basil. And we saw that a two-degree different root zone temperature had drastically different effects on the two samples. And the crop response in this case was fresh weight yield. So we know temperature matters, but these climate recipes were the first of what could be thousands or millions that together can characterize the phenome of basil. So imagine these platforms all around the world, people growing basil at home, restaurants, school, lab, and all of their data porting to one place to create a climate bank, just like seed banks, where you could store useful climates for use now or in the future. This is the Open Phenome Project, 
a database that could grow to make access to climate possible and to characterize the phenomes of all kinds of crops. A network of food computation. So we kept working on the food computer and got to this version, which we open sourced on our website. Hardware, software, bills of materials, build manuals. So what is a food computer? You have a growth chamber with an insulating jacket to isolate it from the environment. This pink glow is from an LED panel with red and blue light, which are the photosynthetically active parts of light to plants. Then there's the plant support system, a foam tray that holds the plants above a hydroponic irrigation system where the roots are suspended in this nutrient-rich water. And this can actually result in two to five times faster growth than conventional soil agriculture and was invented to save water for farming in extreme environments. Then there are the sensors in the hydroponic water, temperature, pH, electrical conductivity, which tells us fertilizer content. In the air, carbon dioxide, light intensity, temperature, and humidity. And so in a climate recipe, each of these sensors are given set points. And in the brains of the food computer, we're telling these actuators when to turn on and off in order to maintain those set points. And all of the sensor and actuator firmware is on a microcontroller, and the control loops are in this tiny onboard computer that's also sending all of the sensor data and images of, the, images of your plants to an online app, where you can see what's in your system, upload your climate recipes, read your sensor data, and download your climate history. And a food computer is modifiable. We want people to change it and then share it back to an online community of food computer users. Like Adrian, who's building a food computer at home and blogging about the process. Or Richard, who has coded a new sensor readout interface and already uploaded its code online. And these students who are modifying their food computer to build taller crops in a larger growth chamber. And we have food computers in six Boston schools, and teachers and students are learning how to operate and grow in food computers. These were grown by middle schoolers in three weeks. And we're modifying the food computer internally at OpenAg as well. This intern is working on a robotic arm harvester. And this one is researching what foods from home immigrant populations in Boston can't grow and is finding their climate recipes in food computers. We're comparing the microbial communities of food computers using hydroponic irrigation versus soil. A new enclosure that's easier to build and flat packable for shipping. And a printed circuit board that will make electronics prototyping even easier. A tiny refrigeration system to cool the air and water loops. People are getting to experience the ultimate freshness of a just-picked bok choy and getting obsessed with how cool roots are and reconnecting with fresh, healthy food. Planting seeds they've never even seen in the grocery store. And most importantly, being exposed to what the future of farming tools and technology will look like. And this is enabling a next generation of farmers and also a next generation of consumers who have grown their own food and can make more informed choices about their food. And it's by enabling these next farmers and consumers that we can attack food security issues head on. We need more nutritious food, more farmers. And farming is hard. I caused the infamous drought of 2013 in this prototype of ours. And I could have used a community of support and an online knowledge base to help me. And that's what we're going to have to create to provide our farmers with the tools to successfully feed the 9 billion of 2050. That's 2 billion more people mostly living in cities, far from where food is grown now. Controlled environment agriculture 
is a way to control our food production, be more resource effective, use less pesticides, and be more space effective so that we can grow inside cities and provide access to nutritious food to as many people as possible. Our food system is incredible and complex. Our food is trucked, shipped, and flown all around the globe, which results in nutrient attenuation and the huge carbon footprint of our food. What if our food system looked a little more like this? With each of these nodes being food computers, instead of sending physical food, transmitting knowledge about your food, climate recipes, useful modifications to make to improve resource effectiveness. Now, a food computer is only a tool for research, education, and awareness. It's part of a bigger solution to a huge problem that a lot of people are working on. But it is a tool that can help us gather the people and the data necessary to make large-scale controlled environment agriculture operations feasible. And that's why we're working on the food server and food data center skills as well all three with the same core operating system. So imagine those nodes, food computers, servers, and data centers gradually upgrading fresh, local, nutritious food that you can trust because you can be a part of at any scale. Because a climate recipe that you create in a food computer can transfer to a larger food data center. And that's how a kid farming in the classroom or a foodie tuning basil flavors at home can learn, explore, have fun, while actually also having an impact on their food system. What if your climate recipes help feed your city fresh produce in the winter? What if your climate recipes are sent to food data centers on Mars to help feed the first settlers? Anyone can contribute to climate democracy. Anyone can farm, but it takes a toolkit and it takes a community to change the future of food. Thank you.